My name is G.W. Martin. I live on Hogback Mountain in Montville, Maine. I created the Sap Pill Resource in the spring of 2004. Seven years later, I'm here reflecting while composing this introduction to the first volume of our DVD format called the Pipeline Series. I'm three feet from the wood cook stove, listening to the black speckled cannon pot we keep hot water in starting to sing. Our chickens have started to lay in again. I got the stove wide open boiling some eggs for lunch. Sitting here home alone has allowed me to indulge a little bit. I just finished my egg salad and got back to writing when I caught a whiff of the rice pudding I had put in the oven about an hour ago. It ain't done yet. I live in a wood heated 20 by 18 improved shack and right now we're using Oh, about two-thirds of it. I'm still trying to fill in some of the cracks before we move the beds into the side room. Right now, we're sleeping in the kitchen. And the kitchen also doubles as the living room, the dining room, the office, along with the girls' washroom. I'm also accompanied today by the clothes drying rack, which is filled with drying cloth diapers. And I'm looking at a couple of them that appear to have some mustards built on them. Actually, it seems to be a, a similar color to the my lunch, the egg salad that is left in the bowl I was sitting two feet away on the high chair. Uh, before I go any further, I'd like to introduce my family. Uh, these last seven years have been eventful. This is the love of my life, Bridget, my partner. This is my daughter, B, Beatrice Rose. And this is my other daughter, Aura. Or Lena Martin. I've been busy incorporating new things in my life, as some of you uh, may know from reading my articles. An important incorporation has been chores. I guess I always have had chores of some sort, but I'm talking about, about famine, taking on responsibility for other consciousness around me, and organizing my day <clears throat> to keep those orders alive and sustained. One of my personal goals in creating the SAP pill was to learn the skills it was going to take for me to be completely self-sufficient, you know, off the grid. Solar panels, outdoor furnaces, greenhouse windmills, on-demand hot water heaters. Well, here I am, seven years later, and no solar panels, outdoor stoves, greenhouses, or windmills. But I'm more self-sufficient now than I ever could have possibly imagined. The SAP pail has held the standard for what it means to be local. And I've done my best to follow its ideals. I mean, after all, they were, you know, mine to begin with. And here I find myself doing chores. Not free like I imagined I would be. But the opposite. Depended upon. I've created a small community. The pigs eat the food that I feed them. I then eat the pig and sell our piglets to help pay the property tax. I use the manure to fertilize the garden. The garden feeds us and its scrap goes back to the pig, the chicken, my cows. My beagles are placed as to garden alert me of intruders and my chickens occasionally get a little bit close and might end up being lunch, but at least it's a beagle lunch, not a raccoon or a skunk lunch. I cut wood and trade that wood for hay in which I feed out to the animals. Using mules to twitch when I can is also keeping another circle within the farm and they eat hay too. I cook with wood, eat my water with wood, smoke my bacon with wood, our property grows wood. Sustainability grows from interdependence. The small community that my family and I use to sustain ourselves exists because of chores and habits. Every order or part does their chores. The pig eats, the chicken lays, the dog barks, the mules pull, and I shovel manure. And if there is extra, I get to choose where to put it. That is the freedom by relying, contributing, and playing my role in small circles of existence, I have actually become more independent. And at the same time, that understanding has created security in my life. I have become my chores. A person is what they do. The trickle-down theory may be the popular tune beating on the drum today, but I'm the most conservative-minded person I know, and I'm here to say it ain't trickle down, it's trickle up. Security builds upon security. Strong feet and legs make a stable man. A strong foundation supports a sturdy, a sturdy home and a fertile soil supports a healthy people. Healthy people live in a healthy nation. By developing habits and chores that have added to my security and stability, my family and I can play a stable role in our community. 
Remember, it's interdependency. If you are dependent upon and stumble, then the community in which depends on you will look after you with their extra hands. On Wednesdays, we have a community dinner up on Hogback, in which a variety of local folks partake in. A few of us were having a not too uncommon, involved conversation, and a friend of mine, Ryan, made reference to Waldo County's value of localness. I guess as if it doesn't exist in the same way in every community. You know what? And he's correct. We do value the local craftsmen, the farmers, the artists, musicians, and products, food, and businesses. And the sap pail has been a testament to that. Every reader, content provider, business that has been there with us is a testament to our value of local busyness. We here in Waldo County hold the bar as what it means to be local. The sap pail is making some changes. We're not abandoning our print publication. We're reducing its frequency and adding this DVD format for several reasons. Sat Pail has gained fame by recording and publishing local skills and knowledge that support independent lifestyles. Those skills are popular amongst us because we understand that we are leaving some necessary parts of our existence out of practice. As the old saying goes, if you don't use it, you lose it. And our articles have provided folks with some of that forgotten information. And depending on your initiative, quite possibly just the information you may have needed to breathe some new life into a lost process. This information is accessible because there are still folks actually practicing these essential skills. And not just practicing because of its nostalgia, but as a necessary element of their lifestyle. But as the days go by and new generations get past the torch, this information isn't being passed along in proportion. Our children are leaving home still to climb into debt without the basic information needed to live, a low, to live low impact, independent, and healthy lives. Interestingly, many of these children, like many of us, will start to put pieces together and realize that they need to make a change. But by the time that realization comes, how many of them will be able to find that necessary information that they need? The rate in which you are leaving this stuff behind is faster than young folks are recovering it. And that sat pale article, like that old skill, will too become less valuable. And the reason for this has to do with the way folks are used to learning. The average young person today has never even heard of a microfiche. And the library is where you go to get internet access. If you haven't noticed, books are losing their place in our world also. And when the practice of them de decreases, so does the skills used to access the information in them. Reading and writing itself is falling from our practice and common use. The majority of reading and writing composition today is happening on a computer. What that equates to in sap pill theory is that the ways in which we have been accustomed to and are practiced at receiving information itself is being left behind. The old saying says, a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, what is a thousand pictures a minute worth? And then you add some sound? Convincing for sure, but with the potential of being extremely informative. What we receive while watching a video recording of a particular process that we don't necessarily obtain while reading an article is the background, the foundation, the place, and the style, the feel, the environment in which it's taken place. There is such an abundance of information that sets the stage. The viewer can use that information to recreate the process without having a lot of practice in history with the topic. What a uh, DVD format video provides for us that a, uh, let's say, an, an ordinary uh, Satpel article, magazine article doesn't is uh, the background, the, the, the place in which this uh, skill is taking place, the style, the feel, you know, the lifestyle of the people that are actually uh, performing this thing. Uh, <clears throat> what happens is, you know, over time, this, uh, this information, this background information gets lost. And uh, a good illustration of that is uh, these two cookbooks. This one here, published in 1939, Good Main Food. And this one here is A Joy of Cooking, published in 1975. Both of these books 
have had their heyday. They provided the information that was needed at the time for them to be popular. Uh, this one here uh, speaks of uh, boiling lobster in, in uh, three lines, how to boil lobster. And over here, and uh, uh, the joy of cooking, we have one, two, three, four, uh, five and a half, six columns on, on how to uh, prepare and boil a lobster, which is the information that was needed then. For, for folks, you know, to, to feel confident in, uh, in practicing that skill or, or giving it a shot. There's uh, another example is the, uh, is the mashed potatoes. Same thing, six or seven lines here in the uh, uh, Joy of Cooking. You know, it's, it's not a huge recipe, you know, a lot more lines, but in the end it, it refers you to, uh, or excuse me, in the beginning it refers you how to, uh, you got to from a page of page uh, 317 to uh, learn how to boil potatoes. Where in here, they took for granted that you knew how to boil potatoes before you mashed them. So uh, that's the kind of uh, information that you can uh, receive in this video without necessarily having it spelled out for you. You can see it in the surrounding environment. So how do we make the jump from microwave TV dinners to cooking our food on a wood cook stove? I'll tell you how. It takes someone actually practicing the skill first. Then that person or group of persons need to make themselves available to those who would like to incorporate that skill in their lives. And last, that skill has to come in a way that the recipient is accustomed to receiving information. Folks are accustomed to and most comfortable getting their information from a screen. For us to effectively pass on the quickly diminishing lifestyles we are living, we have chosen to take a portion of the sap field into a new video format, DVD. We still will have our in-print version, just not so many of them. On this DVD, I hope you find the flavor of the sap hill that you have come to expect along with a new glimpse of how we are going to increase our local awareness and value over the seasons. I would like to conclude this introduction with a, uh, with a thanks. To all our sponsors, starting seven years ago, day one, to most recently, that have placed their support and belief in our publication. And a thanks to all those that have taken the time out of their days and entire days to compose articles for us to publish. And last, a pat on the back and extraordinary gratitude to all you folks out there, readers and supporters, who consciously choose local first. Uh, thank you and enjoy. To see more of GW Martin and the Sap Pale Pipeline series, please go to sappale.com. We are proud of the main businesses and musicians who have supported this project with dollars and songs. Thanks for watching.